Hi, this is going to be the introduction to the breathing process in bel canto. And so what I'd like to share with you first is the first thing that my master teacher said to me. There are two ways to take air into the lungs. First, what I'd like you to do is exhale all the breath gently and have you inhale through the nose. And you may notice that the air went to your back and release. And now I'm going to have you inhale through the mouth. And you may have noticed that you got more of a sensation down the front side of the body. Now the first big like, wow, how magical we are, is this idea that we have the ability to control which channel the air goes in. And I always found this fascinating because there's one airway. So why does one go to the back and one go to the stomach area, the abdominals, all right? So what I've come to as I've done this work over the years is that when we breathe through the nose, the air is taken to the back of the throat and basically then is filtered down the back of the throat, which then would engage the backside of the lungs. When we breathe through the mouth, the quickest route is sort of straight down the front. So what I'd like you to do is exhale gently, and now I'm gonna have you inhale gently through the nose. Suspend two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and release. And again through the nose. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and release. And one more time. Suspend two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and release. When we sing, oftentimes we can't breathe through the nose when we sing because there's not enough time in our in our music to do so. So we're going to now activate the back by breathing in through the mouth. But this time what we're gonna do is tell our brain to pull it to the back. Exhale, inhale through the mouth to the back. And just by thinking of it, the back opens up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, release. And one more time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and release. So I'd like you to do this exercise three times a day. Once in the morning, perhaps, once around lunchtime, and once in the evening. And initially, I would do it three times a day for three weeks. And once you get used to it and you've done it for three weeks, I want you to continue to do this exercise daily, three times a day for three months. Over that period of time, the body gets used to this opening, opening and holding, opening and holding, opening and holding. Somewhere between three months and six months, this behavior will become automatic and you will not be aware of when you are resetting breath. It'll just kind of start to happen. This is your first breathing exercise. It's an isometric exercise. It's a very gentle exercise, but it's going to do a few things for you. The first step is that it's going to pattern the neural pathways of the mind, teaching the mind to focus the body, opening up, pulling into alignment, pulling the air towards the back, all of this sort of opening space, holding still, opening space, holding still. This is a way of training the body from a structural place and starting the process before we've even sung a sound. But what that's doing is reinforcing and strengthening the inter and extracostal muscles of the ribs. So remembering that these muscles of the rib cage are involuntary muscles as well. And they aren't exactly used to being asked to hold still. So there is a, a certain amount of, we'll call it muscle training, you know, like going to the gym, muscle training of those ribs 
to be able to actually hold still for a longer period of time. The strengthening of the rib cage, the stabilizing of this is going to ultimately stabilize what's called our subglottal air pressure, the pressure that's being gently sustained below the vocal folds is being held still by the ribs. Now I'm going to add another piece of consciousness to this video for you so that you can understand the big picture. When's the only time you would ever hold your breath? And the answer is underwater. Oh, the San Francisco Bay in the background. When we hold our breath underwater, we're actually reinforcing the closure of the vocal folds. That's very interesting. Most of us don't know this, but the physiology, the physical reason for our vocal folds is not because we want to make sound. They actually exist to save our life. They automatically close when we hold still. Now, in truth, they're always closed. The only time they really open is to take air in, or if we're purposely exhaling, to let air out. But most of the time, we're not actually breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. We only do that if we're in yoga class or we're being asked to exhale. Most of the time, the body while we're talking is has taken the air in, but it's kind of just holding still and losing air pressure. And then at some point, the, the pressures diminish to such a degree that the equalization of air pressure happens again and we open up. What's really cool about bel canto mechanics is that ultimately, as we open up and stabilize those ribs, the rib cage is reinforcing the vocal fold closure component of our singing. This becomes really important because the folds have to be connected, approximated, closed in order to fully make a tone. So this is why when we're working with these mechanics and we start to notice that singing gets easier, it's because we're reinforcing the vocal fold mechanism in a way that supports it to do its job. That will get you started with the breathing mechanics of Bel Canto.